Lillian Smiesta. Now, it's odd because unlike all the other international fame lovers, Lillian is not a national champion. She won a special one-off fame lab at CERN, the place where they have the Large Hadron Collider. Now, they staged the competition as part, uh, as part of CERN's 60th anniversary celebrations. Uh, there's only so many protons you can smash together before you need some form of entertainment. And uh, Lillian, a Norwegian experimental particle physicist, was declared the winner. Now, interestingly, the day they found the Higgs boson at CERN was the day that Lillian says she was suddenly accelerated into science communication. Because as a Norwegian, all the Norwegian media suddenly wanted to talk to her as their country's representative in finding the Higgs boson. Uh, so, and she enjoyed it so much, she decided science communication was part of the future for her. Uh, Lillian says she thinks the world's an amazing place that deserves our admiration. And I think the world is coming to feel the same way about Lillian. So smash your hands together at high energy for our CERN champion, Lillian Smiesta. <laughs> Have you ever wondered what would happen if you fell into a black hole? I have. Despite the sound of the name, black holes as a phenomena are no mystery. Anything made of matter can become a black hole if only made small enough. Take our Earth. If we compress it down to the size of a marble, it would be a black hole. In order to understand what is special about a black hole, we need to talk about gravity. Because what happens when gravity becomes immensely strong, as it does in the vicinity of a black hole, is rather funky. Fact one about gravity. You all experience every day that Earth's gravitational field pulls on you because you are massive. No offense. But gravity does not only influence the things that have mass but also things that are completely massless, like light. Gravity can become so strong that not even the lightest of objects, light, can escape. Hence the name black hole. If you were to fall into a black hole, and let us assume that you wouldn't be ripped to pieces, the light reflected from the back of your head would be forced onto a circular path around the hole, returning to your eyes. Which means you would be able to see the back of your own head. Ladies, ever wondered what your hair looks like? Black holes. <laughs> Fact two about gravity. Not only does gravity influence things that are massless, it also influences time. If we had not known this, the GPS device in your mobile phone would not work properly. In order for it to do so, we need to account for the fact that time down here on Earth moves slightly slower than time up there at the satellites. So the stronger the gravity, the slower time. So as you fall into the black hole, I would see the watch on your arm going slower until hardly moving. In fact, I would never see you fall into the hole at all only slow down as you were going in. To you, however, it would look like the watch uh, on my arm was speeding up until going at an immense pace. You would see me grow old, wither and die. You would see our Earth crumble. You would see our sun explode and our galaxy dissipate. You would see the end of the universe. If that isn't a spectacular way to go, I don't know what is. Thank you. Wow, we started with the end of the universe. Where do we go from here? You're now going to cross the event horizon of our judges. We're going to start with Tom. Well, I feel slightly spooked by black holes now. Can I just ask why you chose black hole as a topic? Why do you think it would interest the public? Oh, there are so many reasons why black holes are an excellent uh, place to start looking. Um, for starters, there are quite some spectacular things going on there. Uh, it is on the borderline of our understanding because we, we can't 
com combine gravity with quantum mechanics. And uh, that's pretty much what collides in, in the sense of a black hole. So, um, yeah, I think that's why. Also, it relates to what I work with in the wind. I want to see how antimatter falls in the Earth's gravitational field. Thank so, you. Yeah. Actually, that was going to be my question. How does it link to what you do okay. on a day to day basis? Yeah. So, Sorry I guess for, ju no, no, for that jumping that one. Yeah. All right, then. Well, <coughs> what is antimatter then? <laughs> 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 right. <laughs> Bear in mind you're on the Earth, so you get the, only get the normal time, not the expanded time. Oh, all well, right, yeah. Um, well, we have a set of particles that we know as the fundamental building blocks of nature. And for each of those particles, it has an antiparticle, uh, which is just the same as the ordinary particle, uh, except from the fact that it has opposite electrical charge. So whenever matter and antimatter meet, they destroy each other uh, and it's turned into pure energy. So I could tell you a lot about antimatter too. Uh, <laughs> we can show. Yeah. Now, we've got time for right. one more, yeah. judges. Okay. Good. Yes. How do you feel your experience of FameLab will influence what you do in the future? I think FameLab would be quite important for me, actually, because I've learned a lot from, from attending this. Uh, I've met so many fantastic people who are so resourceful. So I think it will be an inspiration and help in order to know where and how to bring science to the public. I just hope you realize that when you talk about the end of the universe in that English with that Norwegian accent, I kind of believe it's about to come any second now. <laughs> One more time, please, for Lillian Smistad. Yeah.